Hello, every folks, and good afternoon. Uh, so today I wanted to cover something that I've seen come up a handful of times that I figure enough folks might potentially get some benefit out of that it's uh, worth discussing. Um, so when it comes to uh, getting a PSP or Vita uh, in, uh, in, well, now 2021, uh, and or whenever you see this, um, I've seen it come up that they've gotten relatively expensive. You know, there's, uh, there's some issues in actually getting a hold of them, all that kind of thing. And, um, well, there's a few things that I think you guys ought to try, uh, because, uh, well, I mean, I've been buying and selling the things for a decent bit, bit now. Uh, truth be told, I usually have low to no budget to work with on that one, and, well, I've been able to get them for relatively cheap most of the time. Um, well, most of the time, slash all the time, because there's really no way for me to get them if they're not ultra cheap. Anyway, so let me get to it then. So first of all, on uh, PS Vita's, this is going to be a way shorter discussion because yes, those ones have gotten crazy expensive, especially since uh, uh, since all the stuff came out recently uh, where you can go put a bunch of uh, phone games on there, meaning you get like KOTOR and uh, friggin' uh, uh, San Andreas and all that kind of thing on your Vita. Those things, yeah, pretty darn cool. In fact, um, uh, I had originally gotten mine for practically free and uh, wound up selling it recently just because of how high the prices have jumped. I mean... The, the friggin' thing was like 250 and that was on the low end. I've seen them go up to 400 for some of the models. Um, but here's a, here's a couple things to consider. First of all, uh, if you take a look at uh, at the different types of Vitas that are available, there, there were two models that actually went out, and the second one, for whatever reason, is generally not held in as high of a regard. I guess people just like the look of the originals, or they like the LEDs on there, or they just prefer the OLED screen on there. Who knows? Um, I know personally, I absolutely love my uh, my 2000, so the slim model, and um, and yeah, they're I mean they're fantastic devices. Uh, like personally, the reason I actually ended up selling it wasn't even due to the price as much as the fact that it uh, I have carpal tunnel. It was kind of getting aggravated by the thing. So anyway, um, uh, kind of back on track here. Uh, generally speaking, if you're looking for a cheap one, look for one of the 2000 models, and also understand that not everybody's aware of what those things can do. There's a lot of people that just dig them out of their basement, and they're like, well, screw it, this thing got overhyped and nothing came out for it, and it's a dead console, and they'll just, you know, sell it for nothing. Um, it does take some looking sometimes, but usually you look on places where people might be a little bit more clueless about that kind of thing, whether you're, you know, at just asking around if you're at a garage sale, you see somebody that's selling a bunch of uh, electronics from around that time, like, man, you know, I was, uh, was looking for a Vita, but I can never find one. And it's like, oh, well, hell, I have one of those collecting dust. You uh, you want to buy it for, like, friggin' 50 bucks or something? I don't care. Because many folks, uh, when whenever they buy something and they feel like they got burned by being let down by the product, they will basically go and sell it for nothing out of spite. That's basically what happened with the one that I got. That uh, the guy had, uh, had thumbsticks that were faulty on the thing, which actually that is another thing that you should probably keep an eye out for. Um that uh, they do have faulty thumbsticks, especially the 2000s, so if uh, if you see a case that, uh, you know, somebody is selling it for really cheap, just see if it's an easily fixable hardware issue. Yes, I will admit it's a little bit nerve-wracking to go and open up one of those things, especially when it's your first time doing it, but just take my word for it, it's a fairly easy fix. You just gotta be careful, wear gloves, you know, all that kind of thing. Um, just double-check any guides that you're doing twice, and you really should have no issue. I mean, I'm kind of notoriously clumsy, and I was able to uh, to do it just fine. Uh, same thing goes for the PSPs, but we'll get to that in a moment. But uh, that's kind of the main takeaway there, that you can you can do it. Usually just fixing one up that has a simple hardware issue, or finding somebody that has some spite against Sony and is selling it for that reason would be the easiest way to do it. Um, check Craigslist, uh, check eBay, though eBay tends to uh, get its stuff found a lot easier. Uh, sometimes Facebook Marketplace works for that. Um, garage sales, I have seen them show up at garage sales before if you go to kind of higher end areas. Um, like, especially like trust fund kids that just buy whatever, will usually have no clue what they're actually worth or even care. Um, I've seen that come up on more than one occasion already. So, yeah, if you're looking for a cheap one, look for a 2000 model. That's that slim model. Um, again, personally, I prefer that one, but. A lot of folks just prefer the screen on the original. I don't think the difference is that noticeable. I mean, honestly, the screen on the 2000s looks absolutely beautiful. But anyway, you know, to each their own. So there's that um, on that end. Uh, if you really need an original model, you might be able to go around to used game stores. In, and this will actually tie into our PSP thing here, but um, a lot of used game stores are 
uh, are usually unwilling to sell devices unless they are in perfectly functioning order. So if you have one, for example, that can't read something properly or it's scratched up in some way, uh, the individual parts are usually going to be relatively easy to replace in most cases. Um, so basically, just see what they have available for broken ones. They, uh, you know, they might have something available for you. Um, Actually, uh, broken Vitas are something I've only recently started looking into. They're a, a little bit rare to actually see come up, um, but it is uh, it is doable. I have seen at least one before. Uh, I just didn't have anything to buy it at the time. Now, moving on to PSPs, though. Like, it, by the way, for for the Vita, if you're looking for a busted up one, expect to pay like 50 to 100 still, um, depending on how aware the person is of their actual value at this point. All right, got a little bit interrupted there, but okay, here's uh, here's the thing. So, let's say you're looking for a Vita there, you find one, um, you, you, the guy clearly doesn't know what they're, what they're doing, they see a busted up or a drifting analog stick, and they're like, okay, I can't fix this, I can't prop possibly replace this, I'm no professional. The tone that you want to give off to make that sale happen, because sometimes if they, like, if they see that you're eager to go after it, Usually people's first instinct will be, oh, <laughs> crap, this is valuable. You know, it's going right back in my pocket. Thank you. Goodbye. I'm off to do some research. Um, so what you want to do is just quietly look over the thing. You know, maybe mumble to yourself a little bit. Just like, okay, you know, I think I can fix this. Um, you know, what, 50, 60 bucks? What sounds fair to you? You know, just casually throw it out there like that. Don't be nervous about throwing out the price first. That whole, like, you throw the price out first, you lose thing is a load of crap. That's just something people threw out in seminars back in the day. Ignore that. Um, but, yeah, just, you know, just throw it out there. See, kind of gauge how their reaction goes. Um, try not to show too much excitement for, you know, for getting it for that price. Now, what you want to know is just will it power on for one thing? If you've never had a Vita before, if this is the first one that you're buying, you always have to hold down the power button. Uh, for a few seconds to turn it on. I know that's a weird thing to bring up. I have seen a guy actually uh, go and panic sell his because he thought that he got a broken one because he couldn't figure out how to turn the dang thing on. Um, yeah, it, <laughs> it's just... People people are strange sometimes. Um, but okay, so that's one of those things. Um, try not to sound like a know-it-all. You know, just, uh, just casually, you know, throw a number out there, see if it'll stick. And, uh, you know, just have that cash on hand, obviously. Um, expect to pay a little bit more if, uh, you know, if you want to, if you're really dedicated on getting one, if you need to stay within a particular price range, you know, only have that much on you. Um, that's actually an effective negotiation tactic sometimes, too, in which, um, you know, you basically just have only so much on you. You just happen to be going by a garage sale, for example. It's like, well, I, you know, 60 bucks sounds about fair for this thing. It's all I really got on me at the moment anyway. Um... So I think, uh, you know, if that sounds good for you, you go take this thing off your hands. Um, you know, it's, there's, uh, it's really one of those things you kind of just got to feel out when you're there. Uh, but yeah, if you, if you see one available in that way, or if you ask around, you know, just casually meant, like, don't say that you're, you know, digging around everywhere trying to find one. It's like, okay, I, you know, I've, I've occasionally, you know, just been looking for a Vita, for, uh, for a Vita. I was kind of hoping to just find one to replace this other one that I've got. You know, even one for parts would probably do the job. And, yeah, it's, in a lot of cases, you'll uh, you'll get something pretty decent out of that. So, it's worth looking around. I mean, sometimes, even if you're buying other electronics from people, just casually throw it out there. Because it's one of those kind of niche devices that you probably won't see too many people, you know, going and directly advertising it. Um, especially the ones that legitimately think it's just completely worthless, dead paperweight. So, there's that. Um, now, on the PSP, it's a very different story. Because these ones were much more common. Their sales were, through, you know, relatively through the roof, especially compared to the Vita. Um, there's a lot of people that got them for other people as a gift or whatever else. And a lot more people that just sort of quietly let them retire in a uh, basement somewhere. But my favorite way of actually getting ones is uh, to go to a used game store. Now, not um, not a corporate one. Find one that's like strictly local, like the the, the ones that are even if they're running under um, you know under a uh, more national title, um, just ones that you can tell are clearly like mom and pop type situations. And more often than not, they'll have piles of broken consoles that they just don't have the manpower to fix. And I know I've consistently gotten uh, really good condition PSPs for about, you know, 25 bucks. 
it's uh, 20 25 bucks depending on what they are and like granted they're not like you know just buy it and it's instantly perfect but like for example my device right now um, I ended up switching back over from the Vita to a 2000 model. I, I don't know. I just really like the 2000 model. I know it doesn't get as bright as the threes. Um, I know it doesn't have the screen of the Vita, but just everything about the profile of these things just makes me happy. Um, anyway, yeah, this thing has like no scratches on the screen. It even came with a new battery and a new memory card in there. Like I thought they made a mistake at first. I couldn't figure out why on earth they sold it. I was checking the warranty sticker on the back, which if you ever want to know whether or not a, a device has been messed with, check the warranty sticker on the back um there is a warranty sticker behind the battery um that uh, if you see like uh, little zigzags of lines that thing's been opened before um if you see a sticker over it that says hey this is your warranty sticker this lets you know this thing's a complete virgin then yeah you're you know you're perfectly fine there um so that um that device yeah 25 bucks i couldn't figure out why they sold it to me for that price and it's because they technically couldn't sell it because of a <laughs> Because of a thing that I didn't even figure out. Um, because there was another guy who had actually sold a, another uh, another one for parts to, um, in which uh, in which yeah, this this is one that they had like chucked in a lake and the internals were all rusted and I I don't know my way around a soldering iron. I'm not good at messing with uh, with circuitry, but I do know how to simply replace parts that I can tell are broken. So I sent it to that guy. I'm like, you know, I don't understand why this thing is having this device, you know, or having this sort of issue where I open it up and I try to put a UMD in there. And it's like it's occasionally reading. It's occasionally not. And then it just sort of randomly restarts. So, I mean, obvious answer. This thing is perfectly fine, as is who uses a UMD drive anymore. And that's the thing. Like with PSPs in particular, these old friggin' like little floppity disk dealies. And yes, I know there's nothing going on on screen because I'm busy messing with little circly disk dealies over here. But um, so these old disks technically have to be functional uh, in order for them to sell them. So a lot of them are just sitting on stockpiles of broken PSPs in which they couldn't get those drives working. So I did end up getting an answer to it that uh, that's probably worth checking out as well. So if you ever see a suspiciously good condition PSP, like never been opened, no obvious faults that you can tell, there's a decent chance that that's going to be your issue. But before we even get into what, uh, what actually caused that issue there, if you get a couple of them for like 20-something bucks each or whatever, odds are you can probably mismatch parts between them enough to the point that you can just make one functioning one. Um... So while the standard going rate is about 70 to 100 bucks on these things, you can just buy two of them for like 25 each and just slap them together and get all the working parts into one functional one. Or do what I do, in which you just sort of keep buying one every month, you know, combine it with parts from another older one, sell that for about 70 to 100 bucks, and uh, then you still can just update any broken parts on your own device. Um, that said, these are very durable. Um, it, it takes a lot to actually uh, 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 break a PSP. That's why these things have lasted so dang long. Um, but if you look at any guide out there, it's fairly easy to replace most of the components on there. I mean, there's not a lot of devices that I feel confident in completely disassembling and putting together from scratch. This would be one of them, because almost any part of it can be exchanged with another one. Um, it's actually something that Sony stopped doing immediately after this because they wanted to have parts that basically would kill the device if you tried to swap anything. Um, so yeah, check uh, check those mom and pop stores. They'll more than likely have one. Um, and the uh, the actual way I found to again, it's disingenuous to say I found the issue. It's more like uh, like he actually uh, found the issue and uh, just sent me the uh, the information. If you open up the back panel of the thing, like the the UMD drive. You'll notice to the very left of the uh, of the top left uh, kind of hinge, there is a little black switch. Now, for to briefly go over the kinds of stuff that's commonly wrong with this thing, that is going to be one of them because there's two switches in the UMD drive. One is this little uh, Manila-looking thing close to uh, where that center spinny dealy is, and the other one is there on that top left, right next to the left hinge. Now, both of those have to be pressed in order for the UMD to spin and read. So, basically, uh, basically, yeah, if either one of those are, uh, are busted, it won't be able to use its UMD drive, which leads to them being unable to sell it because they would have to completely rip the thing apart in order to actually replace those parts. But, if, like, a reasonable person, you're not using those crappy UMDs, then... And 
by the way, for anyone that happened to have seen that post where I was asking about all this stuff, yes, I am one of those unreasonable people that occasionally tries to use UMDs, dang it. <laughs> I just like these clackety old discs. Um, but, but yeah, when it, when it comes to that, they can't, like, officially sell it because it's a broken device. They can only sell it for parts. So, yeah, that's, uh, when you can get them for 20 25 bucks, you have your perfectly functional digital device. Oftentimes, they'll even come with the, uh, with the battery and stuff like that. Um, otherwise, if you need a battery, many times you're better off just buying a second device that has a battery and then just selling the parts for more than you bought the device for. Um, again, perfectly reasonable way to do it. So, just look for those mom and pop stores. Uh, you're usually not going to find them on Craigslist or eBay as much, though I have seen, um, you do see the occasional clueless person on eBay. And I don't say this as an insult, it's just like, it's the best way to describe it when somebody has literally no friggin' clue what their device does or is worth or any of that. Um, but if you see somebody that obviously has no idea what's uh, what's going on with that device, then yeah, the, you'll occasionally see somebody like that, like... Um, I got a, a 1000 a while ago, uh, bought it for 20 bucks, had a copy of Battlefront 2 on there, and uh, similar thing, they had a UMD drive that technically worked, but it had a issue with its uh, bottom hinge in which it just kind of came a little bit loose. And um, yeah, just kind of adjusting the pin on that thing a little bit, got it fixed. Um, nice, uh, nice, happy, chunkular device. I really like the the, uh, the feel of the 1000s, even though I don't like the weight. Um, but yeah, um, so yeah, you, the hinges on the UMD drives and things like that tend to be the reasons that some people sell those. Uh, some folks just don't sell them without a charger. Those are about eight bucks online. Um, uh, analog drift is another reason that a lot of uh, people will sell them, which kind of cracks me up because in using a PSP for well over a decade, um, I never got analog drift on there, and apparently it's like, and like let's. Let's be frank, I have fairly, like, sweaty hands. It's just, I, originally, I'm from a cold climate. I do not do heat well, and I grew up in Florida. So, anyway, uh, <laughs> so, still never had a drift on my device, but apparently if people eat while, um, uh, while using their device a lot, they can get crumbs and oils and crap in there. All you have to do is take a little bit of rubbing alcohol, um, put it on a Q-tip, just rub it around inside the, uh, the hole there. You never even have to open it up. Um... If you see a screen that's cracked, in many cases, once again, you're better off just going and buying a new device for parts, uh, scrapping the screen out of there. Um, that's one that does have to be opened up. Um, if you see buttons that aren't responding, uh, that one I've been shocked to run into like three times now, where people had sold it because they're like, oh man, these buttons are completely stuck, they don't react to anything, and then they just had like a chunk of a gummy bear just shoved into... Uh, uh, into one of the little spots uh, by the uh, uh, by one of the triggers, you just got jammed in there. It's like it feels like a solid 80% of the problems you run into with the PSP can be solved with a Q-tip and alcohol. Um, so you just kind of melt that stuff away. If it's sugar in there, you melt it away. If it's oil in there, you melt it away. If it's uh, just smelling stinky, you melt it away. If it's all rusty because somebody chucked it in a lake, uh, you you sell it to a guy that knows how to work with circuitry. But um, in general, that's kind of what you do there. So hopefully this is helpful. If you guys have any questions on any of you know any of the approaches for any of this stuff, um, any you know advice they'd like for your particular situation, I'll try to help as much as I can. As I always like to try to help folks out with uh, you know getting more into these old devices because frankly, like the PSP is is just bar none my favorite console. It's just for being such an old and now obsolete thing. It, I just kind of uh, love how many things it can do, especially for how dang po uh, portable the things are. I mean, like, to this day, whenever I go to work and whatever else, I always have one in my vest. I have my phone in one pocket, I have the uh, PSP in another. And to answer one question from last time, well, hey, I can just use my phone, why would I need to do this? You know, why would you keep this old obsolete crap around? And it's because you don't want to waste your phone battery. Like, if you're going off and you're doing, uh, you know, courier deliveries and things like that, and you need to be able to, uh, uh, to keep track of, uh, of your orders while it's still, you know, while still trying to do something while you're stuck at the drive-thru for an hour, then, yeah, a PSP is going to be really handy because you don't want to sit there burning your battery. Or if you have a broken charge port and you can't easily charge your phone. Um, just generally, it comes down to battery life. I don't want to waste my phone's battery playing games because they always roast the phone like crazy. Even the best phones I've seen out there, uh, they'll still end up completely annihilating the battery life. And 
well, quite frankly, the phone does not play Tactics Ogre as well, or does it have uh, Armored Core, so, uh, you know, gotta, gotta be uh, living that button life is the thing there. So, hopefully this is helpful, um, and yeah, let me know if you have any questions or if I can help in any way. Have a good one, people. Take care.